We have double angle formulas that are going to help us to deal with um, some neat situations. We have something called, uh, well, the sine double angle formula. So I can, I can write that one down. Uh, so it goes like this. It says that sine, when I say double angle, I mean instead of saying sine of theta, we're going to say sine of 2 theta. This is important here. So sine of 2 theta. We're going to have an equation for that. And it turns out this one is really nice and straightforward, I think. It's just 2 sine theta cos theta. So this just tells you that if you're asked for sine of twice of an angle, then this is what you can do. You can just, instead of actually figuring out what the angle is and then taking twice that value, then taking sine of that, you can just skip right away to this and say, oh, sine of twice of an angle, just 2 times sine of the single angle times cos of that single angle. That's how you can do it. Now, uh, for cos, however, there's a few of them. So I'm going to give you those. Uh, so we have cos of 2 theta. And what we have for that one, now we have a couple of them. One of them um, goes like this. It says uh, cos theta or cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. That's one of them. But we also have another one where it's a 2 cos squared theta minus 1. We also have another one that says uh, 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. So those are, there's a few ways of looking at them. And these come from mixing around with uh, these things plus um, Pythagoras. Um, yeah, in any case, this, you, can, you can prove these. You can take your time with them. But I'm just gonna, for now, I'm just going to show you them and just how you use them. So this is the one for cos. So this is how you deal with uh, cos of double angle. So you have three different versions to choose from for this one. You can either choose this one or this one or this one, whichever one suits your fancy, however you're feeling that day. Uh, obviously, it's whichever one you have or what, whatever terms you're looking to do. So let's actually try an example here. So if we have, if we have cos theta equals 3 over 4, or cos x instead of theta, so we'll just call it cos x and x is an acute angle, then find sine of 2x. I still love that little, that's a cute angle. So we're not saying x is a cute angle, it's an acute angle. And we want to find sine of 2x. So before anything else, we just go and get our equation. Sine of 2x is going to be 2 sine x cos x. So it's helpful to just write that down, I think, to start with. So we want sine of 2x, whoops, not 2, but 2x, is equal to 2 sine x cos x. 2 times sine of angle times cos of the angle. That's great. And we know what cos of x, we know that is 3 over 4. So we know this. But we don't know sine of x. See that? We need this. We don't know this. We don't know this. So we need to find this. So that's why we need to do a little bit of uh, thinking to get this. So maybe we can use the Pythagorean identity. I think that's maybe a good way to start. So because we know cos, so we want to find out sine. So maybe we'll use the Pythagorean identity. I think that's maybe a good a good way to do it. So I'll write that down. So use Pythagorean identity. So what do I mean by that? I mean that we can say that cos squared x plus sine squared x equals 1. Now the reason I do that is because I know what cos is. I know cos is 3 over 4. So because of that, then uh, cos squared, that'll be just 3 over 4 quantity squared plus sine squared x equals 1. And then I can square both sides. So that, uh, sorry, not square both sides. Square the top and the bottom. So 3 squared is 9. 4 squared is 16 plus sine squared x equals 1. And then I can say 1 minus that. And actually, this is 16. So 16 uh, minus 9. What I'm trying to do right now is actually just figure out what I'm going to get here. So this is going to be, uh, what's that, 7? Seven, 7 over 16. So I'm going to say then that sine x is going to be, and I'm doing this all in sort of one go. I'm saying 1 minus 9 over 16, but I'm making it a common denominator. 16 over 16 minus 9 over 16, which is 7 over 16. And that would be sine squared, but I'm going to take the square root of both sides, so I'm going to take this and say plus or minus. It is technically a plus or a minus. Uh, so there we go, and then we can even maybe simplify it a little bit more and say that this is plus or minus square root of 7, because the square root of 16 is just 4. No square root on the bottom needed. So there we go, we have this, but we know it's an acute angle. 
we're told that the angle is acute. And what that means is that the angle is here in this quadrant. Acute means less than 90 degrees. So because of that, then, we can think about our quadrants and see, because this suggests, this mathematically tells us there's two answers possible. But we can figure out, then, which one we should use. Because places where there's sine, sine can be positive or negative uh, in different quadrants. It all depends. So in this case, because it's an acute angle, we know that the sine is positive. So that's how we know to only use, only use the positive value. So I would say, so only use sine is positive. So because of that, then, I know now I can say then that sine x equals square root of 7 over 4. I can say this. Now, I needed this in order to do this equation, right? Remember the whole point of this. The whole point was to say sine of 2x equals 2 sine x cos x. Now I can finally do it. So now I'm ready for action here. So sine of 2x equals 2 times sine x, which is root 7 over 4. All that times cos x, which is 3 over 4. Now I can just figure this out. I'll just uh, multiply the tops together. So 2 times 3 is just 6, so it's 6 root 7. And the bottom here, 4 times 4, is 16. And I can reduce that, because 6 and 16 can both divide by 2. So it'll be 3 root 7 over 8. And I think that's as good as I can make it. I, no, I can't think of anything else I can do. Oops. So that's probably good enough. There's my answer. So it looks really ugly, but this is the exact value for this. Now, of course, you can use a calculator and tell me what this is, but... I like, I like to do the exact version, the thing you don't need a calculator for. Let's do another one. Here we have sine of alpha. I'm just trying to give you different letters so you're not so confused if you see an x or an alpha or a theta. So sine of alpha is 3 over 5, and cos of alpha is minus 4 over 5. What's sine of 2 alpha? So in this case right here, what I'm going to try to do is, again, just use an equation uh, for the double angle. So here I want a uh, sine, and it's a double angle with sine, so let's maybe go and look up the equation for that. So I have the equation for sine of 2 alpha. It's going to be 2 sine alpha cos alpha. So I'm going to write that down just to be absolutely sure I know what I'm doing. So sine of 2 alpha, oops, actually maybe I can just leave it right here, because I got it right here written down. So I can say that equals 2 sine alpha cos alpha. Here's good news, that's really easy. I know both the pieces, so this is really straightforward. So that means it's going to be just 2 times 3 over 5 times minus 4 over 5. And this is actually going to be really straightforward. This shouldn't be a big problem here. Um, then, I just maybe want to fix up my 4 here, so it looks a little bit nicer. So 2 times 3 times negative 4. Well, 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. So that times 2, that's negative 24. And I have 5 times 5, which is 25. So this should be my answer. And I can't do anything else with it. No, it's only divided by 5. So no, this is it. That's the answer. Now, how do I do this one, though? Cos of 2 alpha. There are lots of ways of doing this one. And you have a lot of choices here. So we can use, if you look at this, we've got a double angle formula with cos. We can use this first one, or the second one, or the third one. It really doesn't matter. Maybe I choose to do, I don't know, maybe I choose this one. So let's say I do 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. I'm going to use maybe that one just for fun. So 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. So I'm going to try that one out. So I have 1 minus 2 sine squared alpha, not theta, alpha. So then away I go, I can just calculate this. Well, I know what sine alpha is. So I'm going to say 1 minus 2 times, and what's sine alpha? It's 3 over 5, so it's 2 times 3 over 5 squared. And then I just got to work this out and take my time with it. So this is 1 minus 2 times, and 3 squared is 9. 5 squared is 25, which gives me 1 minus, and here we have 2 times 9, which is 18. So 1 minus 18 over 25. Now I want to get this a common denominator, so it's going to be 25 over 25 minus 18 over 25. Uh, what can I do now? I guess I just subtract them, so this will be 7, so it will be 7 over 25. And that is about as far as I can go. I can't really do much else, so there we go, we must be done.
So I'm just trying to show you that this is how we can deal with these double angle formulas or formulae. Uh, we can choose whichever one we want for the coses, but for the sines, we just have this one. That's it. That's how easy it is.